Okay, so I think we'll get started and then everyone else can just trickle in. So, first of all, hello everyone again and welcome to the second instalment of our two-part webinar series, Sustainability in the Age of Digitalization. As discussed last week um, in the first webinar, the purpose of this webinar series is to explore how sustainability fits into the digital landscape and how data-driven companies can leverage information management to move towards more sustainable systems and practices. This event is co-hosted by Share PLM and QCM. A lot of you will have met me last week, but for those of you who didn't, my name is Maria Morris from Share PLM, and I will be your host for this event. I'm going to do a quick introduction and then we'll get into the presentation. So Share PLM is an independent consulting firm accelerating companies' PLM transformation with a people-centric approach. With a focus on simplicity and user experience, our team helps companies connect products, people, and processes to take you and your team to the next level. At Share PLM, our team is made up of a unique combination of strategic advisors and practitioners with hands-on experience, united by a passion for all things digital. In this event, Sustainability in the Age of Digitalization, Martin Lundqvist, a senior PLM consultant at QCM, will delve into the ways in which we can leverage technology within information management and connected fields to create smarter and greener practices. QCM is a management consulting company, highly skilled and experienced in information management and the different steps within digital transformation. Martin himself has an accomplished background in this field he received a PhD from Lund University in astrophysics before beginning his career as an information management architect and digital analyst. He began his current role at QCM as a senior PLM consultant in 2018. And since then, he has worked on various PLM projects in a variety of industries, ranging from construction, electronics, furniture, and food. So in this session, we will discuss the relationship between people, processes, information and tools before building on information management and digitalization. We will then go into product information modeling um, across the entire life cycle before delving into how to actually begin the digital sustainability journey. At the end of the session, we'll have time for a Q&A. So at any time, you can ask a question um, by using the Q&A panel um, in the bottom toolbar of the webinar. So without further ado, I will let Martin start this great presentation that we've prepared for you today. Martin, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Maria. And uh, hello, everyone. I hope you have uh, had a great week since uh, last we saw each other. Um, I will start with a short recap. Uh, last time we spoke about the, the environmental ch challenges with waste, uh, climate, uh, uh, food and petrification and how much information is required to create solutions that matter. We also discussed how uh, governmental bodies are increasing the pressure with le legislation and how customers increasingly require sustainable options uh, when they're purchasing your products. Uh, then we discussed what is, what is digitalization and how does it support the growing needs within the field of sustainability. We could see that by having a good control over the information required for sustainability work, it becomes much easier to do the right thing. Uh, we also looked at how, who the people uh, working with sustainability are within the companies uh, and what situation they might be in today. Uh, we ended with, an, with a simple example on how it could look instead. It might be considered a dream situation or an utopia, but unless you start the journey, you won't go anywhere. Uh, I really liked the questions I received last week. Uh, I noticed that they were primarily aimed towards digitalization and, and how to get there. Uh, therefore, I decided to slightly change the focus and broaden it to include more methodology and change management than I had, had originally planned. Uh, and I hope you like it. So uh, let's go. People, processes, information, and tools. You might have heard these words in relation to, for example, digitalization and service management before, but this is also a key words in product lifecycle management, PLM. PLM is often confused with, a, uh, with PLM system, 
Uh, and yes, it is a system too. However, PLM is the business philosophy of having a product focus within the company. People get ideas which are tested and maybe they become a product. People design and develop a product. The product is then produced, sold, and hopefully recycled or even better reused or refurbished. Uh, to make sure that everyone works with the same information and that they understand each other, they have support uh, from systems where the information is enriched during the product life cycle. Both the people's own work, how they work together and how they use the systems are supported by a stable foundation of processes guiding them. Today we will look into these four words in relation to digitalization, PLM, change management and sustainability and how we work uh, with this kind of with these words in our product projects with customers. So let's start with the, the people. Having people, the users with us on this uh, journey is essential and understanding their needs uh, and wishes are one of the key, keys to success. This is very true in digitalization and PLM projects as it is also for the sustainability journey we all must take. Uh, when starting such a project, what management does is essential. There must be a clear vision for the, for the company, where it's heading, which the whole management st stands behind. The vision should be tangible, otherwise it be, will be looked at as a dream and it should be well communicated. Accompanying the vision, there must be a strategy showing how the vision is supposed to be reached. Having interim goals uh, help guide the way forward. A side note here, uh, which I've noticed, uh, having a sustainability vision and strategy for the company will be, probably be a key to be able to hire skilled employees in the future. Uh, just like uh, we spoke about customers increasingly uh, have asking for sustainable choices, so are employees looking for sustainable values when choosing their next employer. Uh, so uh, then when planning the project, um, there must be put resources into it. Uh, and with this, I'm not primarily referring to hiring consultants as us. We can contribute with experience, know-how, change leadership and other skills, but even the best of us cannot run the project without company internal resources. They are the ones who know how things are done today. And as they are the main users of the project outcome, they should define how things will be done tomorrow. We normally ask our uh, customers to appoint champions within each organization which is affected by the project. Preferably, these, uh, this should be experienced people who actually want to be in the project and who are willing to stay and not managers with too much to do or someone who just happened to be available at the time who isn't interested at all. The task of the champion is to act as a stakeholder for the, their organization, design the solution together with the project and inform and educate their colleagues. When the co project closes, these people, the champions, will be the experts carrying the outcome of the project onward and further develop it. Uh, I actually started my career, a PLM career as a champion responsible for a system and software organization. Um, so I know it works <laughs> and I learned a lot. Uh, exactly who to appoint as a champion is of course up to the organization's managers, but it must be clear from top management that uh, the resources should be put into the project then that it is prioritized. Uh, when we do an assist assessment, which is what we always start our work with, uh, we aim to understand how people work now, what are the jobs to be done and what the employees, the users need. Uh, this is done in interviews with the champions and, is, and uh, also additional people if needed uh, and crossover workshops. Using the information from the interviews, we can trigger good discussions in the workshops uh, around ways of working, information management and tool support. This is where the journey starts. These discussions can and probably will break organizational, communicational and informational silos. The champions realize with the help from skilled change leader that they can do things smarter together. 
Um, and together they start to build the new process where people are connected. So a process is a, is a guide to lean on when you're not sure what to do. Processes must be supporting people on how to work with information in communication between different roles and within the supporting tools. When the champion starts to align their ideas on how to work more efficiently, the process can be designed from a value stream perspective instead of each organization having their own isolated process. It will show how different roles work with each other. Who do you get your information from and to whom do you deliver? What are the deliverables between roles? What, are, what is the information object they share? And what systems are used? It should also show where decisions are needed and what requirements need to be fulfilled uh, at certain points. Uh, one such requirement can be that an information object should have the status released or approved in the system before next step can be taken. Uh, in that way, we have also connected information status or maturity uh, to the process and, who is, uh, and we know who is responsible for it. Another discussion which probably will be showing up in these early discussions between champions is the language. Uh, and I don't mean English, Spanish or Swedish, even though uh, a company language is also important to decide on. I mean what people call things within the company. It's not uncommon, uncommon that, that when we ask uh, our customers uh, and people, uh, uh, what is your product? Uh, we get different answers from different people. One person might say, uh, it's what we design. Another one says, it's what the customer buy. Uh, so including packaging. Uh, yet another one can actually have another description in between these two or something completely different. The language, terms and abbreviations used must be aligned so there's no confusion when, confusion when people share information. So this leads us into the information management. As we have discussed, information management is key to success within the field of sustainability. We need to have uh, a well-built model for how to handle information and who handles who handles information, what inf information is needed where, and how the information objects are connected to each other. To get there, building an information model is a useful tool. When looking at an information model, which I will show you how to do here, uh, it can look quite technical and might be seen as something you only use for system implementation. How However, for us, it's not that. We use them for both educating people, designing processes, and when helping customers choosing and implementing systems. Actually, these models have become one of my strongest tools. Um, so this part will look complex, but I will try to keep it on a high level. You don't need to grasp every part of this. This is something that is done, developed for each company, and you learn as you go. Um, it should also be noted that while the example I will show is a typical model for a PLM project, uh, the same idea can be used for any digitalization project or other project where information is involved. It could be used for a, as a, to model how a landlord communicates with potential new and existing tenants and how they rent the laundry room or parking space. It's all about what, what the information objects are and how we use them and what relations they have. Here I will guide you through the creation of an information model of a fictive toy car uh, made by a fictive company and extending it uh, to a model and many parts, uh, uh, extending uh, it to model many parts of the circular business model. So we have this toy car. I actually found one that is similar to the, to the picture. <laughs> uh, this consist car consists of a body, wheels, uh, and a chassis, wheels, and wheel axles. Uh, these uh, parts may up, make up uh, the car. Uh, so let's uh, connect them. 
Uh, now we have started to build an uh, object model of this car. The boxes being objects, information objects, and the lines are their relations. Let's see what we can do with these objects and relations. Well, we can use them as information holders. The objects can be classified by different types. A car body and a wheel are objects types or classes. To these objects, attributes can be connected uh, for the object car body. We might need attributes uh, describing width, length, height, and weight. Whereas for, whereas for the wheel, radius is more useful uh, than length and height. The attribute should describe what the object is and its characteristics. Uh, we can also use the relations to hold uh, uh, metadata, such as amount. The car has four wheels on two axles and one of each car body and car chassis, of course. Uh, by having the weight on, uh, on these uh, information objects, the, the parts of the car, uh, we can calculate the weight of the whole car simply by multiplying each part with the amount on the relation and summarizing. Um, and we get a very light toy car. This is a very simple so-called engineering bill of material for a toy car. In this webinar, I will not use proper PLM uh, language uh, continuing on, onwards uh, for you who might be PLM professionals. Uh, 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 there are a lot of abbreviation and technical e expression, and I will try to keep this uh, uh, sli a slightly lighter language. Uh, so this is a basic information model. Uh, to keep track of all our objects in our company, we also need some basic, basic attributes. We use uh, ID, a number, a revision, also a number, or maybe a letter. Uh, and maturity or the status to identify exactly what version, version is used, where, and to know what we can do with it. We also have attributes of who, uh, for who has done what and when. Uh, so let's extend this model. Uh, I will zoom in on, on the toy car and the car body to keep uh, things a bit more simple. Uh, these objects represent how it's designed. Uh, but let's say uh, there is a requirement. So we set a requirement on the toy car about uh, how it's supposed to be built. Uh, and we don't have the factory to do that. So we uh, source it uh, from, uh, source a car body from an OEM, an original equipment manufacturer, who have the right equipment to solve it. Uh, the OEM factory needs to be assessed uh, and we want to know, for example, where they, their energy and water uh, comes from. So we add that uh, information objects for that. Um, the sheet metal, which this car is ma made of uh, and pressed probably, uh, we are choosing our, the sheet metal supplier ourselves. I need to keep track of the, the material data. There is nothing stopping us from also creating objects, tracking our suppliers, suppliers, and so on. But uh, let's, not, uh, let's not complicate things more than, than necessary here and today. Uh, the metal sheets are transported uh, between the factories by a logistics supplier. So we add objects for that too. Uh, so let's just stop here for a second. The material is highly important for the sustainability of the project product. So let's see what attributes could be interesting to set on these objects. Of course, there is a, there are the physical project properties, density, tensile strength, viscosity, viscosity if it's a liquid, and so on. Uh, you can set many different attributes on an information object. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is also where we can add information like percentages of recycled material, recyclability of the new material, purity of the material, use of chemicals, uh, carbon uh, emissions, and water use in the production process can be set here. Uh, if it's a composite material, it can be broken down into to even more, uh, more material components. Uh, 
the material source could be a, a processing uh, plant or a mine. For some material, the origin origin of the uh, of the material is extremely important and needs to be certified, and you need to keep track of that. How you get the information for this uh, these objects might differ. Uh, sometimes you may, might be able to get get the actual data, and that would be that's great. Uh, but sometimes the data might be a calculated value from an LCA database, and those are getting better and better for every day. Uh, more and more PLM systems have this actually as a built-in or as a connected uh, service. So just like we calculated the weight of the toy car in the last slide, material use, material data, and uh, sustainable ability data can be computed upwards uh, uh, it, by the uh, via the amounts tracked in the on the relations, so we can get the uh, full data on the take toy car for all, all its parts. So let's move on in the uh, model. So uh, let's move the toy car and car body down to the right side now this time. And uh, uh, let's look at the sales dimension. Uh, we need, uh, and logistics uh, dimension, of course, because we need the packaging. Uh, of course, to track all the packaging is, and all the levels, you, you might pack it for uh, what the customer and the customer buys, and then what the, your, the store buys, and then on the pallet, what you transport. Um, and don't forget the labels, prints and documents included, maybe an instruction or a warranty or what it might be. Um, uh, the, in, the, in this case, this fictive uh, company, the product is produced and packed uh, to the master pack level in our factory, but packed on pallets in a warehouse next door and sent to our customer store. So we add objects for all these two. So the factory on the right and the warehouse is connected to the pallet and in the right corner you have the customer and store and the sales order is uh, what the customer is uh, ordering uh, and as you see it's all related keeping track of packaging is uh, from the sustainability uh, view as you know very important uh, the same as with uh, the parts of, uh, parts of the car uh, the packaging uh, needs to be tracked uh, down to, to uh, the material um, and the material source. And it all depends on the, on the needs and requirements you have on the company and the product. Uh, regarding our own factory, we of course have full control of the uh, electricity use and water use uh, and use of other consumables, uh, but we don't add them in this uh, uh, model today. So let's minimize the logistics routes and remove some stuff uh, for clarity. Uh, what if the business model is circular? Uh, if the product is leased uh, to the end customer uh, or the end user, we should have an object for the end user where information is kept uh, tracking who is leasing what. Uh, if the product is not reusable or refurbishable, we will have to send it for recycling. Uh, since we, ha we have designed it, we know exactly what it is made of, and therefore we can make sure it's optimal for recycling, and that the recycling plant can get that material information. We can also keep track, uh, keep information about the recycling plant here, uh, if we are the ones who are deciding where it should be recycled. Maybe uh, we can purchase the recycled material from them. There is a circle. So yes, this is becoming a rather large model of different information objects, and they're all, uh, all related in some way. Uh, by using this information model and adding information at the correct objects, it's possible to trace a lot of information, including sustainability data, as we've seen. And for the whole material life cycle, and as I said last week, that maybe it's even possible to use this for the social sustainability information. Social sustainability should obviously be uh, on top of the agenda for your own employees. 
but also need to be tracked. You, you might need to track uh, that suppliers, whatever they are supplying, are treating their employees well, and that they, in their turn, set the same requirement on their suppliers and so on. Such information is probably checked by purchasing when uh, doing the supplier assessment. So uh, that is the place we can store that information. Uh, and by having approved suppliers in the system connected to your product, you can keep track of uh, that the product fulfills those uh, your social responsibility. So that's an idea on how you can build that one. Uh, so here we have seen a subset of possible objects to use. Uh, actually, only the more or less the imagination sets limits, but make sure to keep your imagination in check because you can easily overdo things and uh, you should be, keep the information objects to be useful uh, because had, adding extra might just add a workload and not the use uh, that we can't use. So also by setting some rules on the, the classification, the language, how you can use the object as certain maturity or statuses, how you revise them, and you set rules on dependencies via the relations. Uh, then you build a, a foundation of what we call the information management standard, uh, which is guiding how information is used within the company. Yes, let's add some people to this model. So who is working with these, uh, these information models? Who are, who are adding data and uh, consuming data? Uh, well, the ones who are responsible for the objects in question. Uh, R&D designs, purchases, assesses suppliers, production plans and execute production, sales and marketing handles customers and marketing and material, and so on. Uh, so when looking at this and using our information management standard, we can also see the process in this. R&D designs, but needs purchasing to find and assess the supplier of the material who can, who can deliver it. The material and the supplier needs to be approved before the final design can be set, which is needed to start production and so on. Um, yes. So I hope you're ready for a real life example. Uh, what I'm about to show you now is uh, now was used during the whole PLM project at one of our customers. It's a food producer. Uh, I will not go into details. That would take uh, a long time. The goal is to give you a quick look at uh, how a real world information model uh, uh, can look and what it can be used for. Uh, this is an example of, an, of a conceptual model, which I call it, uh, which we built uh, from information received during uh, interviews and from documentation. Um, it includes example of products with packaging, the white boxes, suppliers and their deliverables in green, factories in red, and documents in blue. It shows how you use revisioning, maturity status, classification, and language. For this customer, Sustainability is very important. So we use this for implementing CO2 calculations and calculations of packaging material use. We also model tracking of organic certification and supplier assessments and very much more. Uh, we use the model in our cross-functional workshops for process design, designing a future information model agreeing on an information management system standard, setting system requirements, system design, and education of employees from all parts of the company, including management. So by zooming to different parts, we could focus on the discussion, focus the discussion to that specific area. Yes, I know this is a lot. Uh, let's uh, look at the last word of the four we started with. The tools, a little bit simpler picture. Uh, as you have seen, the information model can be quite complex and it might not be a good idea to build this kind of uh, object oriented uh, information handling in Excel. It might be possible, but it's a bit awkward. System support is needed. 
there's not one system that solves any digitalization task. And every company is different. So different products, business models, markets, and peoples uh, creates different sets of uh, solution requirements. Uh, so before you go off and buy a new system, make sure you know what you need. Uh, take a look, look at the current system landscape and uh, what services uh, it gives, uh, what features it have uh, within the company and look at how they are utilized from a business perspective. Uh, do a system mapping, showing what system does what, which information each uh, system masters uh, owns, uh, how the systems are connected and how information flows via the connections. Uh, in the case you already bought a system, but feel you might uh, not done it right, uh, no problem, don't despair. The customer who, whose information model I just showed had a poorly used master data management system that we actually rebuilt to, to become their new primary PLM solution. So you just need to do an assist, uh, assessment and know what you have and then know where you're going. So another uh, real life uh, example, also a, a lot of information on the same, same slide, but uh, bear with me. Um, this is a, a real life example from another customer of ours. It's a fairly typical company uh, who have reached uh, digitization, but not digitalization in the digital, di digital maturity ladder. Uh, this system uh, map was modeled by me and my colleague from what we learned when we uh, interviewed the stakeholders throughout the company and looked into their systems. Uh, the model show where information is mastered, the green boxes here, uh, to where it's transferred, different arrows, and how, by whom, uh, uh, the small uh, stick figures are people. Uh, I will not go into details here, but note the, that the dotted lines represent manual transfers, uh, for example, via Excel sheets. This company had uh, issues with product information errors showing up on the web, uh, which they had problem tracing where they came from. Uh, in other companies, uh, the information consumer could be a number of different functions or roles, uh, such as the one doing the sustainability reporting. So uh, let's uh, highlight. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's highlight an issue we noted, which might not be ob obvious, but at first, uh, there is a large number of dotted lines and stick figures here. Uh, transfers between their uh, the R and D, their CAD systems, and the rest of the systems are all manual. There is a manual entry of data or import of Excel data into the uh, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning uh, System. The data is then transferred via the PIM, Product Information Management, to the web on the right side here, uh, without any proper controls. Uh, if we generalize this problem to any company in this situation, we will recommend an overview of their processes by their people, of course, and to make an information model like the one we just look, looked at. By having this and know the business model and product for portfolio and such, we can build a requirement list uh, uh, to tell us how to solve this system deficiency. Uh, and of course, the vision and strategy here is very, very important. How do they want to work in the future? But here, maybe we could integrate the CAD with the ERP system. Uh, I see that as a minimum solution, uh, the simplest uh, you could do. You don't get very much extra features on that one. Uh, but more commonly, we, uh, depending, of course, on the ERP system, there are very competent such systems too. Uh, but more commonly with the PLM system. Uh, and, but notably, every company is unique. So then there is no silver bullet for this one. So <laughs> I touched upon all four words people, processes, information, and tools. 
let's discuss a subject that is important for the success of any change project, uh, the education. Uh, implementing such a fundamental change as a digitalization of PLM journey can be, uh, it's not an easy endeavor. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, it is difficult to get companies and people to change their ways, especially if they have been uh, working in a specific way for a long time and the change might even uh, affect the people's own tasks uh, when administrative tasks disappears. However, the obstacles to a successful implementation change can be significantly reduced through education. The education should start early, already during the assist assessment, uh, discussing issues with stakeholders and asking, uh, why do you do like that, uh, makes people think. Uh, then, as I mentioned earlier, we like to see champions appointed into the project. These persons uh, will start the educational, their own educational journey at the very beginning of the project and co continue learning throughout. Uh, Next, the next step of spreading knowledge can be achieved by hosting a series of workshops uh, together with the champions uh, for the future users and other stakeholders. Of course, this is the goal with this is to calm many fears and highlight why the change is necessary and, be, and beneficial for everyone involved, even if it doesn't look like that at first. We think it's important that everyone affected understands why the change why the change is done and what the benefits for them and others are before getting to, into the use of the actual system. The systems should be a supporting tool and not just another thing you must do. And by understanding the underlying concepts and benefits, it's easier to see how the tool supports you in your work. So, yes, this looks simple, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> well, maybe not. It's a complex thing to perform a digitalization or PLM project. So where to start? Well, I would say the most important of it all is don't wait and see. Um, the more the company grows, the harder it becomes. Set a vision for the company. It can be divided into digitalization and sustainability values you want to reach and build a strategy for how to get there. Don't take too large steps and don't aim too high in each of the steps. Communicate it. Make an assist assessment so you know where you are. It should contain a picture of how information is handled today, how things are documented and how it's controlled. And current processes are vital for setting the stage for change. Uh, system map should also be included in if, uh, and information on current portfolio and business model. Um, when you know the assist situation, you can build a plan and set a suitable project scope from the strategy. Start with the people, the users. Let them set the process as an the line company language and let them start building the to be information model and synchronize uh, the process with it. Uh, so now after you've heard me talk, there is one thing you might notice I haven't talked about. The IT people, they are very important too. But I want to stress that you should not uh, do the mistake of uh, uh, Confusing a digitalization of PLM project for an uh, IT project, Add, adding a system or two. It is a business change, which should be driven from the business side, where the users are. I'm not saying IT shouldn't be involved, of course, they are very important. They need to understand why and how the new system uh, should be used and integrated into the IT landscape. They are responsible for the technical bits and often also system support when the supplier has left. So now you might feel absolutely overwhelmed by all this information and I understand you. Uh, however, I hope it has sparked some thoughts and maybe you have even learned uh, some things. Uh, this is my work passion, uh, so I could talk about it for uh, days, uh, just ask my colleagues. 
I do though have other passions outside work, I promise. <laughs> Uh, but some key takeaways from this webinar. Wait, make sure that you know where you want to go, the vision and how to get the, how you want to go there by the strategy. Appoint champions which will guide their colleagues through the change. Processes, information and tools are all important to build a sustainable future. And during the mini this mini series, I hope uh, we have shown you that digitalization is a great tool for success with the sustainability work. Finally, just get started. And uh, with that, I give the word back to Maria. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. That was really great. Okay, so we would like to take um, a few moments now to answer any questions that you have. So if you haven't already, please just take a moment um, and send us a question via the Q&A um, tab at the bottom of the webinar toolbar. Also feel free to use the chat if that is easier for you. Has anyone got any questions or if you would prefer, um, I'm also going to send in our contact information. So feel free to um, get in contact with us, send us an email, and we will answer any questions that you have personally. Um, so let me just do that now. Here we go. So. Um, I hope you can all see the uh, contact information that I've sent in, um, but don't worry because I'm also going to be sending you all a follow-up email uh, where I will include the link to the first and second webinar recording. So you can revisit any topics that have been discussed because I know it's quite a lot to take in. Um, and like I said before, please feel free to get in contact with us. Uh, we'd love to speak to you all individually and yeah, hopefully see you in some future webinars.